Ave Maria Purissima, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. It's the feast of St. Raymond of Pennyfort and St. Uh, Emerantiana. St. Emerantiana, we mentioned uh, the other day. It's, she's St. Agnes's uh, foster sister, and St. Agnes is martyred on the 21st, and then St. Emerantiana was praying at her grave. She's a catechumen, and the pagans came by, and she reproached them, so she was stoned to death and baptized in her blood. So she's the second commemoration day. St. Raymond of Penyafort, in, uh, in the Collect, mentions several things that are important about him. He was born in 1175 in Spain, uh, was a, was a well-renowned teacher already by the age of 20. He taught in Spain and then in Bologna. His bishop brought him back to Barcelona, and he it, among other things, what he did is he put together really the first confessor's manual. So he assembled basically the moral theology and put it in order so a confessor would know and have all these things at hand. It's not like you can just pick up the Bible and tradition and instantly assemble those things in your mind. We, we're really dependent on other people before us doing that kind of thing. He ended up uh, becoming uh, a Dominican at the age of 47, right after St. Dominic uh, died. So he went into religious formation at the age of 47, which is already remarkable, and, and did that. He became, uh, he became the confessor of St. Peter of Alasco and St. James of Aragon. And then Our Lady appeared to them, all three of them. And so that's why you had the, the, the Mercedarians formed uh, to, to ransom captives. He wrote the rule for it, for it St. Peter of Alasco. He told him, give your wealth to that. St. James of Aragon, of course, uh, supporting as the king. The king then uh, had problems with women. So he's at Majorca. St. Saint, uh, Saint Raymond of Pennyford is preaching all over the place. They drive the Moors out of Majorca, uh, and St. Raymond is preaching there, and the king's over there, but he has a woman in his court that St. Raymond says, you know, he has to go. This, this, this isn't going to work. And the king's dilly-dallying around. So St. Raymond says, all right, I'm out of here. I'm going back to the mainland. And so the king said it'd be the death penalty for anyone that would uh, assist him in leaving. So St. Raymond just laughed at that. He walked down, he took off his cloak, laid it there, and, uh, and uh, tied, it, tied his staff to it, blessed it, stepped on, and sailed to the mainland. That's like 100, 150 miles or something like that. When he got there, people saw him coming in. It, it took him four or five hours, I don't remember anymore. It's, that's what it's mentioning in, in the call act about going over the waves. He hit shore, and they put a monument to it, and then he walked in and walked right through the closed door of the Dominican house and went right into the Dominican house and went in there. He ended up being the superior general of the Dominicans for a while before he resigned, but uh, during that time he got St. Thomas to write his Summa Contra Gentilis so to, to prepare the Dominicans to preach against the Moors and the Jews because we used to, used to actually think these people needed to be converted to get to heaven. So uh, those are some of the things that St. Raymond of Pennyfort did. He also assembled something called the Decretals, which were very, very important. There's a man before him, a century or so before him, but that assembled a whole group of canon laws called Gratian, and then the Decretals of St. Raymond Pennyfort. And so those were all the, the canon laws of the church that had, that had been issued by the popes and councils up to that time. Because we didn't have a legal system like lawyering until recently. Everything, all the rules were, were put in the context of all the traditions, so canon lawyer had to know the things and why they were that way, and they'd write commentaries on that. St. Pius X and then uh, Benedict XV assembled the first code of canon law like we have now, and, uh, but during their time, it was forbidden to translate it into the vernacular at all, so at least all the canon lawyers would be on the same exact page with the Latin, thinking the same things about the words and, and relying, looking backwards to things like the decretals where things came from. Uh, now we have the second iteration. This is why we get this this crazy stuff like somehow they magically found in the canons girl altar boys and all that. Well, before, when you had things like St. Raymond of Pennyfort, you had all the canons there organized with what with their context, and it wasn't like what we have now. Anyway, great lawyer, great saint. He died at the age of 112, 75. Just a little bit on St. Raymond of Pennyfort.